better. <laughs> Great. Okay, uh, we are now recording and we are now live on channel nine. Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting on September 26, 2023 at six o'clock. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and roll call, please. Teresa Moss present. Joseph Shank, present. Jess Sexton Iranian, present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I would like to thank everybody for their service and those who are first responders. Um, the re tonight's meeting is going to be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. Um, we're also going live uh, on channel nine. Chairman's additions and deletions. Um, I have two. I have uh, one for 2.4. Um, this is an ARPA project for the Townsend Fire Department. And uh, this is for a fire rescue vehicle. And also I'm going to add <clears throat> a 2.5. Um, and that is to appoint um, Lunenburg uh, firefighters. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Want to ask if anyone else has video? It's on the video. It's okay. Um, Teresa, do you have anything to add? I do not have anything to I don't add. Okay. Um, 1.5 uh, review and approve the meeting minutes. We don't have any minutes. I didn't see any in yeah, the folder, so we're all set. We're all set. Okay. Instagram. 2.1, review and approve um, the RFP response from Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association for the old Central Fire Station. That would be you, my friend. Yes. Um, so as the board is aware, um, and it got uploaded into the SharePoint, um, we had uh, put out uh, some requests for proposals for uh, uh, renovations to the um, so, so various buildings in town. Um, uh, and the three that uh, we put out for three buildings, um, we got responses for two. The first one that we have is the uh, response for the old uh, central fire station. Um, this was a proposal from the Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association. Um, uh, this would be um, to rehab uh, the um, the, the old central fire station um, uh, and um, uh, then I believe you use it for um, uh, display of uh, old fire equipment. Um, so that again, that was included in the, the packet. Um, so uh, to, to create a fire museum to, to preserve the history of the Townsend Fire Department. Mm -hmm. um, so we did not get any other proposals for this structure, uh, given the kind of risk of deterioration for that town building and the lack of funding that, on the town's behalf for us to be able to appropriately maintain it. Um, uh, it seems logical to me to allow another, an outside entity who's willing to put some money into to restore the building and then use it for a public purpose, which would be, you know, a fire museum. Um, seems like a logical use of a town building, but I, you know, it's, it's in that the lapse of the board assignment to, to see whether or not they wanted to go forward with this. I, I think absolutely the smartest thing we can do to get somebody at fire association and whoever they're working with willing to renovate that building, upkeep it, upgrade it, and upkeep it. I think it's the smartest thing, so I think we should move forward. Can you help me understand uh, what's um, the Historical Society's involvement in the process and how that works? This is not the Historical Society. It's not part so of the, the, okay. there, there is there is kind of concurrent proposals for Historic Society buildings to be renovated and, and redone. 
Um, those are kind of, they're not in concert with this. They're just okay. parallel kind of proposals. So that came they're not forward. like, they are gonna do this. So I just, I don't wanna like uh, duplicate. Yeah, there's no kind of quid like pro quo or anything. No, 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 this is, this is, we had totally gone out just for town buildings and just to see what we could get done with these town buildings that were, vacant and kind of in disrepair. And so this is the proposal for that building. And it seems like a logical, like I said, a logical um, proposal given them. Yeah, this is also, I just want to point out that we had discussed um, at the beginning of this year and then the beginning of last year, if you remember, we looked at our selectmen's, um, what we would like to do mm -hmm. and um, look into and, and help uh, finding ways to restore historic buildings here in town was one of them. And uh, this is this is where we all came up with making sure that uh, um, we were doing something that was right. the biggest but, and best. Thing. Right. I know that they've been doing surveys and working on things that they want to do with their buildings. And I do, I'm just like, I want to make sure that they, if we come up and say, okay, we're doing this with that building, we're making a dog kennel. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. I don't want them to say, oh, wait a minute. No, we're making a dog kennel with one yeah. of our buildings. You know, you know what I'm saying? This would not duplicate the, the anything that's being done in the historical okay. society. Yep. I just wanted to make you aware that you're being recorded. Oh, sure. you know. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing better to do, I guess. <laughs> no, perfectly, okay. perfectly legal. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as far as um, how I see it, um, this satisfied what we were kind of looking for in the beginning, because when we discussed all of the buildings, right. Um, this per this particular proposal actually is 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 more than what we are looking for. So Good. I'm I'm very very pleased with what it is. So um, I guess what I would like to do is um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the RFP response from the Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association for the old fire station, old so central moved. fire station. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any. Um, any discussion on that? Nope. And Chief Shepard, did you want to say anything in regards to this? Um, it's really under the president of the association. Okay, if I close this door because we're hearing some noise from elsewhere. Thank you. It's uh, really be up to the association, um, but as a chief, I am aware of it that we do have some ideas and schematic designs already done for both buildings. Without any expense to the town. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. I do. I do. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Oh. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, so I, I will note in that one, and I believe in the in the the next one as well. The, there's a discussion of a uh, of a request for a 50 year lease. Um, that would be, obviously that's would be something that would have to go to town meeting, mm -hmm. just as, as the board is aware. So, And it's not um, something we would need to entertain now, correct? That, uh, no, I think we'd have to approve this first and then we would, we would, uh, we, we could put it on uh, when the board is ready to have a fire station. No, the, the, the central fire station. Both of them were for, had 50 year leases in the proposal. If you, if you eliminated the 50 year lease, could they move ahead on it because we don't have a, Town meeting or vote till when? No, I, I think I don't think it would stop us from from enter, entertaining a, a agreement to do the work, but we would need a town meeting vote to, to sign a lease to sign it. So if we did the work and then we signed the lease, act, we would be able to sign the lease. So that would be up to the we'd have to talk to them. So the, the hope was that we could do any of the structural stuff mm -hmm. to maintain yeah, the yeah. integrity yeah. before yeah. the winter. Yeah. So I, I'm not saying that's a precursor to getting any work done. It's just that, that you would request that. I just wanted the board to know that. So. You requested the 50 year? The, the, I'm sorry, the Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association. Why 50 and not 100, which is more typical? Uh, I understand that. Um, I just thought that might leave a little bit more flexibility. I don't think any of us will be here in 50, never mind 100. <laughs> I'm going to be. <laughs> the world has changed in the past four years. We just ratcheted it back. There may, there may be an extension on that, though. Okay, thank you, guys. <laughs> That it would automatically renew after 50 years in option two. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then we would go to 2.2. 2. 2. 
uh, review and approve the RFP response for the Townsend from Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association for the Old Harbor Fire Station. Um, I've been waiting for this to come up. So this is a you know a similar um, proposal from the the Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association to renovate the the Old Harbor Fire Station, which is folks know. It's also a town building that's in disrepair. Um, this one actually came with um, some more detailed plans, which um, uh, uh, which I think are great. Um, but it's for all intents and purposes the same situation the town finds itself in with an asset that we we um, own, but has not been maintained historically, and we don't have the funds at this point in time to. Um, to do kind of the, the restoration work ourselves. And the, the fire relief, uh, the fire EMS Relief Association is offering to do this, um, you know, to, to renovate that piece, that property. Mm -hmm. um, I've drafted, assuming that the, the board uh, approves this, I have drafted a letter to the state to let them know that we would be terminating their um, license to use that facility, which they have right now, but that would be awaiting the board's kind of approval of this. Mm -hmm. to, so are we looking at any any lapse of time between when work is starting to be done and their lease? How soon are they going to be able to get it out of there? Well, I think we would give them 30 days. I think that's, the, that's what we, were, we had talked about. Okay. Give them 30 days to, okay. to move. Um, and I know that there, we haven't gotten into detail with the fire, the fire department. So there may be an opportunity for them to have space in the, uh, at somewhere in a different town of building. Or a different town property, maybe where they could park it in a lot or something. There's been some evolution since then. Okay, but, but that's obviously not what we, the board would be voting on. We would just be voting to accept the RFP. Um, so I'd entertain a motion to approve the RFP for um, from the Townsend Fire EMS Relief Association for the Old Harbor Fire Station. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? For me, for me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So be it. Finally. Um, Thank goodness. Yeah. If I, if I might ask the, the board, given that the chief is here and not to waste his valuable time, if we might want to uh, be willing to take 2.4 out of order so that we can discuss that with the chief 5. as well. 2.4 uh, is the ARPA fire rescue. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 2.5 is the police station. Yeah, right. Police station. Sorry. If that's okay with you, Chief. It sends the article on the way. Okay. All right. So 2.4, we'll move up 2.4. That's the ARPA project with the Towns and Fire Department um, in regards to purchasing a fire vehicle. Um, the I had asked um, Sabrina to put this into SharePoint um, so that you guys could see. And I think, did you both look at that? So yeah, well, everybody's yeah. aware of what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so go ahead, Eric. So, um, as I think Joe brought up at an earlier meeting, um, uh, uh, Chief Shepard has been uh, kind of very diligently working to try to figure out ways to maximize the lifespan of our expensive town fire equipment, um, and while still providing, you know, um, the high level of service for emergencies that I think the mm -hmm. residents have come to expect from our, our fire department. And quite frankly, the residents of many towns outside towns and they've come to expect from our, our, our EMS services. Um, uh, and one of the, uh, the chief's proposals that I thought was an excellent idea was to um, try to find a, um, a used um, piece of fire equipment that would be emergency response vehicle that would allow the fire department to not have to roll out uh, the ladder truck for every um, uh, emergency incident. Um, um, as I'm sure folks are aware who've been paying attention, ladder trucks are not cheap. Um, and, you know, it's a $1.5 million piece of equipment. If we're lucky, given the price increases over the last few years, it's probably close to a $2 million piece of equipment. Um, and every extra mile we put on it or extra time we roll it, in bad weather or even just get it out on a highway where we can get hit by something is a, is a risk we're taking with a very expensive piece of equipment. Um, um, so um, the, the, the idea would be to obtain uh, a, a used piece of equipment that another um, municipality uh, no longer needs and um, 
fit that out to be the emergency response vehicle um, to, 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 to allow us the ability to leave the ladder chuck mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the barn. Um, um, and um, after scouring, I think North America <laughs> in its entirety, <laughs> um, the, the, the chief has, has gone above and beyond, I think the procurement requirements of Massachusetts to try and find a, a piece of equipment that would um, both uh, provide a useful service for the town. We don't wanna buy something that's gonna turn, we're gonna turn around and pay you know, to maintain or it's gonna fall apart on us and is cost effective for the town as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had talked about uh, a, a, a tentative budget from ARPA of uh, about $30,000. We have more than that in excess in our um, uh, other COVID related expenses line. So the proposal would be to be take $30,000 out of that line um, to pay for this piece of equipment. Um, um, I'll let the chief give you some more some specifics. There were photographs uploaded uh, in the SharePoint, if you had a chance to look for them, I do have color photos here if anybody wants to see them. Um, but I would kind of turn it over to the chief to talk about the, the specifics about that piece of equipment. If you have a little bit. Thank you. Uh, tonight, I've got Deputy King with me. And I think it's important to recognize that this decision was not made in a or suggestion was not made in a vacuum. Uh, our officer call, much like an executive branch of a business, uh, made up of uh, myself and two deputies and captains and lieutenants. And, and that truck committee, we've batted around the idea for some time. Of how do we uh, minimize the exposure of uh, the $850,000 ladder truck that we bought in 2009 that has a minimum life expectancy of 20 years to 2019? And uh, the, uh, the replacement on cost on that is about a million and a half today. And uh, you're right, when you go out in a slippery day for a car accident, whether or not the car accident, warrants the equipment that's on that truck it has to go because it's got the minimal equipment as well the, the speedy drive the brooms the shovels uh, the cones things like that but it's also big enough it's cumbersome and may increase risk in the streets especially on a day when traffic has been compromised so we've looked around to try to identify what may be the best option to provide safety to our folks safety to the folks involved and, um, and minimize any that potential uh, risk for the traveling public. Now that's on a very basic level. Now the same goes for people that lock themselves out of a house or a number of other things that fall under the rescue category. So there's really three branches of fire services. There's uh, rescue and there's, uh, there's truck company. So you get engine companies for fire suppression, you get truck companies for uh, aerial and extrication and you got uh, medical companies for, uh, for the ENS. So we hit all those three points and we think that uh, that truck just uh, puts a, the town at risk of greater liability. So we began looking, now we started to drill down truly in North America. We had three in Canada, uh, all American made trucks and the exchange rate between here and Canada, 0.73, we thought that would be good. There's some challenges bringing back across the border. We gotta make sure we get a mission. We gotta make sure we get a number of those things. And uh, we've been working with some brokers, some fire equipment brokers, truly up and down the eastern seaboard, if north uh, east of the uh, Rocky Mountains. So we uh, we engaged um, at no expense to the town with uh, with a group out of uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, they helped us find a few of them. I brought with me um, to maximize the. Um, the procurement law, uh, the competition. They started uh, to replace this truck probably today north of 400,000. This truck is a 1989, it's got 11,000 miles on it, 1,600 hours. It's uh, coming out of the uh, Fire District Township in Northern Pennsylvania, North Central Pennsylvania, and uh, South Central New York. Uh, they were at 75,000, they went uh, down to 65,000, 60,000, and then went to 59.9. I've been chatting with them, and uh, and last week I said, "Why don't you just take thirty grand and be done with it?" And uh, they called back on Friday and said, "Give, give us the thirty grand and do it quick. You can have the truck and get it out of our station." They're having similar problems. We used to have fifty folks on their um, on their department. Now they're down to thirty, ten active. So they combined a, a rescue truck with a pumper. So they got a rescue pumper. They paid two twenty five to replace this truck with another used truck. And uh, they'd like to get it out of their out of their garage and out of the station 
and uh, and it's lived inside. So the useful life of this truck, if it's 30 years, is the same as our, uh, other, our other truck. We have another six. I think it's a probably uh, probably longer than that. And at uh, five thousand dollars a year, I think it's a heck of a buy. That's it. After we put the equipment in and do the upgrade. So um, I've got the paperwork here that. Uh, demonstrates that it was listed at 59, reduced to 50. We offered to 30. They accepted it. And the uh, contract that uh, we can back out of that's good for 30 days to uh, to purchase the truck and get it out of there. The next closest competition is a, a truck uh, nine years older, a little bit smaller without some of the equipment on it that this one has. In addition to um, having that age, it's got a cascade system on it. So if we show up at a fire call, we don't have to drive back to the station to refill our uh, our uh, SCBA's self-contained breathing apparatus. We can we can fill them right there on the truck. It's got a 30-foot telescoping light tower that comes up on the top, goes up in the air, 360-degree oscillation, and it can light up the scene. So those of you that have been out at night, um, scene safety is key. And if you don't have lights, we don't have to worry about dragging all that accelerator lights. It's got a generator mounted on the PTO. And uh, it's got capacity to put six people in the back. We can have our own rehab. And uh, we think it's a great option. Next closest truck was a 91 without all of that. And that was 50,000. The next closest truck to the one that we have, almost identical, but it has a winch um, down from 99 to 649. It was sold last week for the 649. And that's an almost identical truck. And I've got that with you too. And that was a 649. The rest of the trucks are all north of 100. And the closest um, size wise that we found was 190,000. So I think uh, I've got all of it right here and I'll give it to you. Um, I think it's a great option to uh, improve the response time with a smaller footprint, smaller cabin footprint, and uh, have everything in an area that's much safer out on the street and quicker to get to. So, with that, uh, we uh, we that have collectively made this uh, recommendation. I represent that the fire department would like to uh, move into an agreement to purchase this and uh, and move forward. So, I mean, uh, I, obviously, the the um, it's the, the vote of the board, but there is the ARPA allocation funds that I think would be a, appropriate use for this kind of a capital expense. And and I think given the, the lot of saving of wear and tear on our expensive vehicle, it, it really makes a lot of sense for the fire department. Right. And and I have also looked into, I mean, the the, um, the chief has also filled out the right ARPA paperwork. It's, it's been, uh, it is definitely um, um, within the ARPA guidelines that, that we would be able to do. This is in uh, within our purview to make the reallocation for for this. Um, frankly, I thank you, Chief, for the work that you've done. I think more importantly is that um, this allows us to be able to do what, exactly what we what we had decided to do to put to create this um, auxiliary account. To use a term that probably is inaccurate, but when things like this came up and we had the opportunity to do that, that's why we created this account. Um, I think it's a good move for the town, and I personally think that uh, we need to move forward on this. I just want to confirm. I think this again. I think this is a great idea. I have no problem supporting it or whatever. But I just want to confirm. We didn't have this in last year's capital plan. This came up, and we we decided to jump on it, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's a little bit more than that. Uh, Teresa, but we looked at how do we control our budget as our budget has been growing and and unfortunately we're, we're adding a piece which is something that i've been trying to avoid but, uh, i think it gives longer longevity and the other piece if i can uh, kind of galvanize the conversation is that now that we have uh, taken responsibility of uh, emergency management we can also utilize this as emergency management tool as well right. and um we looked at what happened in Lemonster two weeks ago, and there are some things we're deficient on. If we were to have a flood at the Swan Cook River, and some could say it never happened, we got five inches of rain that night, they got 11 inches of rain. We're not prepared. We don't have a boat. We don't have any of those things that will go into this piece. It's, a, it's a roughly fifteen to $20,000 to completely outfit the snow emergencies, for water emergencies, for low angle, for all of that. And I think we can work that through our budget and other, and other options that we have. 
we're going to have a toolbox to put them in. But the, the key point is we have four vehicles currently on the capital plan, and those need to stay in place as well. This doesn't replace any of that. And the way you're speaking, we should probably consider additional things like about when we talk again this year. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah, I mean, but we're looking at some options on okay. it. Um, we, we think we can get a really good high-end boat, rescue boat, that's quick and that can work, work in swift water for three to five thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Equipment. So then it wouldn't come up under capital planning. No, I think we're good. Thank you. And, uh, and this truck here with the air that's on it, we can pull the deflated boat out, tie an air bottle onto it, inflate the boat when it hits the maximum pressure, it blows off, you shut the valve off, and you sail. Thank you. Okay. I just think it's really important what Mr. Shepard has said in the department. I, I said from the day one that they put that ladder truck in as a rescue, that it was the wrong thing to do to have that as a rescue truck. Rolling an $850,000 ladder truck to an accident scene that's already congested, already got issues street or any other street. I think the downsize and what he's trying to do, I think it would be crazy not to take advantage of that truck for that price. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Shepard said, $5,000 a year, that's pennies, that's peanuts. One accident, you know, we know for a fact, you know, they've had a couple mishaps go into accident, buys with that loud truck and it gets very expensive. So I think, thank you, Mr. Shepard for thinking of the town and doing the right thing here. I think if you look at the, the the financial logistics of it, just having that ladder truck run for one, just for one rescue or, or, or one incident, as opposed to having having something that would, is self-containing. I like the fact that it's, they can, um, would you call it rehab inside of it? So there's heat and there's there's the ability, if it is cold or, or in the winter, that they can, they can um, get out of the elements in that and free up an ambulance if they need the ambulance at that particular um, scene. So I think that's a that's a plus as well. Did we um did we make a motion? We didn't no we didn't make a motion. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the RFP response from uh, the Townsend Fire EMS relief. No, this is this is oh the, I'm sorry yeah. that's this. How are we going to do this? Are we just going to make a motion that? to approve the project request form? Okay. This. Yes. Okay. So we'll entertain a motion to approve the opera project request form from the Townsend Fire EMS Department. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Would you like it, Chief? Does this make it easier for you? The yeah. Contract and then the backup documents. Thank you, Thank you guys for all your hard work. And you and I can discuss kind of more logistics. You really want to have fun. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, tell me. <laughs> everybody there. Yes. Nobody gets to leave this building. It's locking everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you're locking the Lock in. in. Um, we need to go back to two point. Yeah, two point three. Um, the review the electronic sign board requests. Um. I put this on the agenda for for one one reason only. Um, when we did the electronic board um, uh, policy, uh, there was a portion of it that uh, we did say that um, it was for town official town business only, and not for private, corporate, or religious functions. Um, but there has been several um, times that we have approved for some private um, situation. Uh, one, uh, I know that we did for um, the Chips, Chipman's um, road race. Mm -hmm. We put that on there. Uh, we've also done some things for the, the uh, Friends of the Library. Um, and I, I just... I don't know. So I, I just wanted to know what the board felt about um, instead of going to official town business, have these other organizations that we've had approved in the past um, to be able to be in the mix. I just wanted to get a, a feeling on what the board felt. So 
what would be the guidelines? Would it like how would anybody who submits we consider it and vote on it, or would there be certain guidelines that you're recommending? Um, I thought the chair was in charge of that. Maybe. Yeah, the chair, the chair would be in charge of making okay. the decision. Well, it would basically signing for it and all of that, approving the language and the, yeah, approving request. the language and all of that kind of stuff. So I was looking to the board on what they thought about opening it up for, you know, the most of most of the time. And I'll, I'll tell you the dilemma is that we have um, um, a holiday fair um, that is the Friends of the Library, correct? Is that, is that what? Yeah, for the library. Um, there's the Haunted Trail for the library and VFW Auxiliary. Um, that and the Kids Country Playground um, that, that we've approved them for. Technically, they're not town businesses, but they are. Yeah, the Kids Country Playground we might be able to get around because it is a committee that was formed by the form here. Thing. You know what I mean? So it's not like a. At the library. But the friends of the library are very clearly not a town yeah, entity, and that's right. the that's the trick, right? And and the the thing that I'm running into because I'm the chair and I have to make the decisions. That's why I'm throwing this out to you, <laughs> is that um, I've when when we did this back um, whenever we did this the uh, in 21, it was first come first serve. Mm -hmm. So when I was getting um, requests for it, I was like, okay, I don't have a problem with it. The language is okay. It, you know, it, it fits in. And then I received something from a town department and they were upset that I was approving non-town department stuff because they wanted to, but I had already signed for a couple of the other ones. But the, if I'm not... If I'm, I might be incorrect, but I thought it was at the discretion of the chair, but it, I thought it had to be a town function. But That's what I'm saying. The policy does state that, yes. And you're asking but to we, change we, that policy. But we have approved other things previously. So, but we're trying to make it official that the chair can approve other pieces because the policy says uh, that's something what I'm different. That's thinking is the best way to, right. to, to so do that. Right, so my thought is, just my thought, we got the new policy subcommittee coming. Wouldn't that be a, a change of the policy? Yes. Well, well it's a bylaw subcommittee. I mean, it's a bylaw. Oh, you think okay. about the bylaw committee that we wouldn't that have. Would this is policies. something that the, the selectmen would do. So yes, we would have to amend the, okay. yeah. the right. So I have no problem amending it. Okay, I, I, I see I, where you're going. Okay, I, I think that you know, I mean, I, I was involved. I think as you were involved, Veronica, when we originally yes did all this about the electronic sign, and it was for a reason that functions in town, town meeting, you know plow and board to help. I get all that. And that's why we wanted them. But what you're saying is they're all still parts of the town. It's all town and town residents are going to benefit from this. Town employees would benefit, you know, community. So I, I would like to just stick to first come, first serve. We have them here. If you know you need them, request them. Once they're, they're signed for, I mean, you make that decision. That's what we, we voted. The chair makes that decision how the signs are used, and I'd like to stick to that. But, so we would then we would need to amend the policy. Right. Because so, that's not what that says. It doesn't just say the chair makes the decision. Correct. It says it's only town, town thing. Correct. So no disrespect, but if the chair came up to the chair in the Nazi association of townsend decided they wanted to advertise we changed the law that's up to you mm -hmm. to decide whether they can advertise or not so can we make a motion tonight to just amend that well this has to go through a first and a second reading and i, I would i would say if it might be something we want to run by town council okay mm -hmm. just so that we're not because there's just you know I'm sure Adam might think of some unanticipated consequences of doing something like that, and we don't want to be. I'm sure he would. <laughs> That's why by keeping it, we don't want to be account, arbitrary and capricious you. about your decision and then run afoul of somebody's First Amendment rights. So I, I'm like the flag issue in Boston. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very concerned of that. So I, I'm just saying that I still am 
because we had done these particular functions in the past, mm -hmm. um, I've approved them as as chair. So, and I'm I'm still going to go by first come first serve. Okay. Right. If that's okay with the both of you, and then we can we can go about amending the policy. Mm -hmm. So, how about if we ask, you just ask me to ask, ask? I'll ask Adam. Ask Adam, and, and he can give us the proper the verbiage and. Go from there, and you okay. guys are all set. We need okay no motion, no nothing. No, no, we need no, no, that's fine. I think we, we make right. motions when we actually I'm make good. changes. I'm good, right? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll okay. reach out to Adam. Yes. I just want to be fair to everybody, and I don't want people to yeah. think that I'm but it's the first come, first serve, and there's we're getting a lot of responses for the electronic transport, <laughs> very popular than we expect. Okay. Um, town administrator 2.5 uh, actually. Two point, oh. Ludenberg, that's a Ludenberg this officer. This is this is why last minute stuff is confusing. Um, do you want to explain this, Eric? What we're doing? Sure. This is a a, a vote to appoint the Ludenberg police officers as officers of the. Of the I think it's special. Do they call them special officers or yes. officers of the town? Yes. Um, uh, the town up till a couple of years ago, had a long practice of appointing a bunch of different officers from a bunch of different surrounding towns that we had mutual aid agreements with as special officers for the town. So we tried to steer away from that this year and, and, and not have a laundry list of all these people that we were appointing um, and just rely on underlying agreements that, that already existed. So our NIMLAC agreement, our mutual aid agreements with surrounding towns. However, it turns out that the town does not have an actual agreement with Lunenburg to do mutual aid. So uh, the police chief would like to have Lunenburg's officers appointed as special officers of the town. Um, it allows, in case there's an emergency in town that pulls our officers away, we could get some uh, Lunenburg officers could be dispatched to cover routine issues in town while our officers are handling the emergency, um, like we do with we do with other towns and other towns do with us already. So this would just be a vote to to appoint the, the Lunenburg police officers and special officers of the town. Um, so I guess I'd entertain a motion to request that. The officers, as listed in this document, be reappointed as specials in the town of towns and effective July 1st, 2023. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? This is like we, what we've done with the other ones. It's yes. just separate from everything. Okay. Right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we'll have those specifics in our minutes that'll outline each one of them. Yes. Okay. Very good. Now we can do 3.1 town administrator updates and reports. Um, so I just have a couple of things very quickly. The first is um, we had a request for there's a fall fest um, coming up. Um, and uh, the 30th, is that the one? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they would like to uh, allow folks to park in um, the town hall parking lot and in the, and in the grass lot in the back. Um, and so right, that would just be our request. If this, as long as the Board of Selectmen is okay with it, we can let them know that they would be allowed to post that those are appropriate parking yeah, areas. Yeah. Okay, so we'll let them know that. Um, the second one's a little bit, a little bit trickier, which is, um, Two capital plans ago, the town meeting approved the purchase of a new highway, one of the big highway trucks, $240,000 highway oh, truck. Yeah. Um, um, because that was in the middle of the pandemic and uh, uh, procurement, or, uh, the, the construction process was hampered by all sorts of, you know, equipment. Uh, related and delivery related issues. Uh, Jimmy has not been able to purchase that truck for highway yet. Um, and in fact, still on the state contract, they don't have a date for when he was going to be able to purchase that truck. So we're running into a problem um, with the upcoming winter and, and uh, him being concerned he's not going to have sufficient vehicles to put on the road. So he has found, uh, you know, a, a, a 
in the open market, the rates for these trucks, and there's some vehicles that might that we might be able to put out an RFP for um, to get quotes because it's over fifty thousand dollars. Obviously, so we have to go through the, the full formal uh, request for quote process through the state. Um, but we might be able to get a truck that would we could have in time for this winter. Uh, the two downsides to that. One is we can't go through a state contract. We'd actually have to post it. And two, the going rate for these vehicles right now, including the ones in the state contract, is about 280 as opposed to 240. Um, so this has happened, unfortunately, to us in the past. It's ha it happened to us um, with um, uh, uh, fire vehicles. It's, it's happened to us with, you know, uh, other vehicles we purchased from highway where the amount that was originally allocated in the capital plan was insufficient and they had to take money from their operating budget to make up the difference. So I think the, well, there was a fire, a fire vehicle that was, I think we had set aside $75,000 for, but the actual price came in at around 80. So the fire department had to come up with an extra $5,000 for the operating budget. And that's certainly not a problem. This is a larger Delta. Mm -hmm. So it's a little over $40,000. Um, I have talked to both town council and town accountant about the possibility of um, uh, paying for the difference out of the snow and ice new equipment account. So we've got the $240,000 mm -hmm. to pay for the difference out of the snow and ice new equipment account, and then putting the um, uh, an additional amount on the capital plan for the spring. If that fails, it's out of snow and ice, so we'd play it for it out of the snow and ice budget. Right. But if it passes, we'd be able to repay the snow and ice budget from the, the capital plan. Both the you know Markham and and uh, town council seemed to think that that was kosher and something we could do. But I didn't want to take that step until I talked to the board and um, it, it, you know at this point in time um, we would need to kind of post it in the in the uh, uh, in the central register. Mm -hmm. this week and probably give you know two or three weeks of posting to see if any of the people who have these trucks would be would respond to the posting the the actual funding of this i i, I understand the purpose for the, for the truck but you said the the it was funded two years ago yes under the capital plan it, it wasn't purchased let's say it was a hundred thousand dollars for over five years or whatever yes. just making up numbers where's you can't reallocate that money since it wasn't spent. It and well, that money's there, but that's only two hundred forty thousand. The truck's going to cost two eighty. Right. So we need an extra forty three thousand. Forty three. But you can't just add it on to the end of the capital plan. That's well, you'd, we'd have to vote it in a new capital plan to add that additional amount. Right. Because all the capital original capital expenditure was was for two forty. Right. So we can't borrow more than two forty with that capital approval. So. We need another approval for the delta. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm guessing it's going to be around between forty and forty-five thousand dollars, but we wouldn't know until we got it approved. Okay. Um, well, we found a truck and yeah. the money. Yeah. And... Okay. And we we'll get lucky, and someone will come in at the price we need. It's know. possible that we didn't get them less. We would post it. But like, <laughs> but Jimmy has looked at the, at the trucks that are that are for sale that are off, that are not going to the state contract. Like I said, there's nobody can buy right now. Yeah. And another reason we got to get our capital planning meeting together. Exactly. So. Um, that would be something I would re be requesting a vote for if the voter stuck would vote vote to authorize that plan to 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 um, allow for the purchase of the truck now and and potentially put it on the capital plan. So moved. Second. We can second it. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Joe Shank, aye. Aye. Okay. So that that's I'll talk to Jimmy and we'll put out the RFP. I'll let the board know. When we get the responses back from the RFP um, as to what that is, and we'll, the initial plan will be to pay for it out of snow and ice, new equipment. There is money in that. There's just not forty thousand dollars in that, but we're allowed to deficit spend in the snow, the snow and ice account. Um, um, and then hopefully we would get a capital um, approval to pay it back. And you know, like I said, I did vet it with the accountant and the town council to make sure that, that was okay as well. Sounds good. And that would be it for for this week. Yeah. Um, 3.2 is our next meeting will be October 3rd, 2023 and 3.3. I'll entertain a motion to review and sign payroll and bills payable warrants out of session. So moved. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody like to move to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn the 645. 645. Meeting at 645. Second. And motion moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, 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 aye. All right, meeting adjourned. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Let me. Uh...